Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have yet another graphic novel that I wanted to share with you that I got my hot little hands on and read so fast. It's called The Magic Fish by Trung Li Wen and it was just so interesting. It's a recent publication. I think it only came out a few months ago, if that. And I saw it being posted about on the uh, underlined account that I've been really into on Instagram these days. I feel like all recent books I've been adding to my library inner loan list have been coming from them. And this book was no exception. So let me just go ahead and tell you what it's all about. The premise of this graphic novel is focused on our main character whose name is Tien. He's essentially a young adult, first generation, a American born child of his parents who were Vietnamese immigrants from Vietnam. And what he focuses on is he focuses on the fact that him and his mother and father like to read out loud fairy tales. At first, it like starts out as a way for them to practice their English, to help work on acquiring their English, but it morphs into something so much more as the story unfolds. Tien is struggling with a number of things, one of which he is struggling with is the fact that he is someone who is gay and he struggles with how to be able to explain that to his parents because he understands the cultural divide between him being American born and having been growing up in America versus his parents who are Vietnamese born and bred and have immigrated over to this country. He also struggles with a connection to his family overseas. His mother oftentimes engages in phone calls, but he himself hasn't met any of the members of his family because like many immigrants, they're also struggling socioeconomically. And so he knows that they don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of excess you know, income to spend even on going back to Vietnam. And so he's dealing with all of these things while also navigating like his friend group and having a crush on a guy in his little friend trio. And so there's just a lot of complexities. And something I really liked about the story was the way Trung managed to blend the fairy tales so well with the actual like plot of what was going on. They were very intentional. He didn't just take already existing fairy tales and plop them into the story. He brings a spin on them and breaks them down in a way that really mirrors them well with what's going on in the story. And so it was really beautiful in that way. I also really appreciated the illustrations. I liked in here that with the images, they stuck to basically these colored backgrounds. So we have different tones of that color, but they're not fully colored pictures. And the way they help differentiate between like the fairy tale versus what's happening in Tien's life is a lot of the fairy tales are in one color. So here we have, you know, these pages that are in purple, but leading up to it, you can see the previous pages were more of this like pink ready tones. And I think that was a really interesting choice that I really liked. And I just think that this story, it really mimics what I think a lot of first generation children in immigrant homes face. And I think that cultural divide is something that I know I've read about in a lot of different young adult books that I've picked up recently and read. But I think the other complexity of that is the sexuality piece that comes into this. I think it was really just so well told and was so effective. And I just want to read one note that um, he put in here at the very end. It's a little bit lengthy, but I think his words and what he has to say about his inspiration are just beautifully written and capture everything that I'm trying to express. He says, I set out to tell a very small story. One of the odd challenges of writing a story about characters living within any social margins is the gravity of marginalization itself. It is such a dense thing, seeming to insist that all the pieces of the story should orbit around it. Immigrant stories are like this. As compassionate readers, we sometimes intellectualize difficult human experiences to keep them at arm's length. There is an appropriate vernacular, a set of vocabulary words in a syllabus, and a common language established for the sake of facilitating dialogue. At our worst, we find the stories of immigration reduced to character tropes employed, for example, by the news for a disaffected viewer. The stories start and end with the arc of an exodus, and we forget that things continue to happen after, and that ever after does not happen for everyone all at once. At our best, we want to take a bird's eye view of the situation in an effort to be as comprehensive as possible. In this way, immigrants seem to take on the flatness of fairy tale archetypes as interchangeable pieces in recurring stories of upheaval and dysphoria. 
In both cases, we prefer to look in from the outside, all the quiet yearnings, the ambient heartaches, and the thousand other little indignities of feeling lost in your own tongue are overlooked in our best intentioned efforts to be broad and comprehensive. And so I set out to tell a very small story about a boy and his mother figuring out how to express love without the benefit of an appropriate vernacular, a set of vocabulary words in a syllabus, or a common language to facilitate their dialogue. I wanted to explore how stories can serve as both an escape and an anchor for us in our real lives, and maybe for at least one story. Decenter the gravity of marginalization to tell a story about one of the little pieces that orbit around it. Like, I just think that's a the way he put that into words, and this is the whole thing about books that really get me, is that just using language, a writer is able to take you to faraway lands. They're able to get you to feel what characters are feeling. They get you invested in the lives of these fictional things. And they did that with just words. In this case, words and pictures. But still, they did it with these stationary things. And that will forever, forever make me a lover of books. And I just, I really appreciated what this book stood for. I think it is well deserving of all the praise it's been getting. And I, I definitely recommend this. I think this is a phenomenal graphic novel. I think it is so well thought through. And the, again, the blending of the fairy tales with the plot was just exceptional. You can really tell that this author has a depth of fairy tales, origins, variations of fairy tales, and he blended those with also like culture, like those two things together were really, really interesting. And I just, I highly recommend this as a graphic novel. If you're looking for something that's gonna make you think and really take you to a place, then you wanna definitely go ahead and purchase or borrow this from your local library. All right guys, that is it for me. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about The Magic Fish. And if you have read it, please share your thoughts down below. Of course, I'm always looking for book recommendations, graphic novel or not. So if you have any, let me know in the comments. And I'll talk to you in the next video real soon.